we have done the infamous item only run. We modded Seymour in and did a run with just him. But now let's mix things up. Can you beat Final Fantasy X using only magic? Now, some of you might be sat there thinking, well, duh, of course you can. And to those people, let me remind you of something. Mob Immunity and Reflect. The previous two challenges, we could get around both of these things using different methods. This time around, however, we can't. Remember, it only takes one teeny tiny problem to kill this run entirely. And even me, with how many times I have played FF10, I don't actually know if this run is possible. So, let's make it even harder anyway with some rules. Rule number one, magic only. We are only allowed to use magical attacks, and even though some people would count summons as magic, they are still not allowed, as they're simply too strong. However, during the forced summon fights, like Isaru in Baval, we can only use magic with the Aeons. Also, we will be counting Kimari's Ronso Rage as blue magic, and therefore allowed. However, Lancet is not, so I can't learn more overdrives with him. The only exception to this rule is Dream Zanakand at the start of the game, and Orin's lone fight in Lucre. Once we have access to the Sphere Grid, I must grind Tidus to learn Lulu's magic using the Expert Sphere Grid. Once I have a single spell, the magic only rule set begins. Rule 2. No items. Items are not magic and therefore terrible. Rule number 3. No customize. Okay, come on, it, it's pretty clear why this is banned, even if it will make things harder for me. Rule number four, the only overdrives allowed are Lulu's and Kimari's. And rule number five, speed up booster and the booster to make encounters spawn more are allowed as a time saving measure. All other boosters and non-encounter are banned though. Now, with all of that out of the way, go drop Daff, the lovely editor of this video, a follow to help cheer her up since there will be no Bahamut this time around. And you can cheer me up by helping to support the channel with some likes, comments, subscriptions, and of course, follows on my social medias linked down below in the description on Linktree. Get early access to videos like this on Patreon or level up your gaming skills with some sweet, sweet merch like that lovely OnlyFans hoodie over at primalstore.net. Now, with my shameless plugging done, let's jump into things, shall we? And we start things off right at the very start of the game on the title screen. We have to choose the Expert Sphere Grid for this run so that we can get magic on the other characters quickly. Then it's just a speed run through Dream Zanakan's tutorial, murder a spider in Barj, and then it's onto the ship with Riku, where we get the Sphere Grid, allowing us to get magic with Tidus. This is the last time Tidus will ever use a normal attack. So, murder some fishies and grab the first spell, which takes 13 levels. But, now we have a problem. Blizzard costs 4 MP, and Titus only has 12. This means I can only cast it 3 times before needing to heal. And now that we have magic, I cannot attack with Riku because she can't learn it due to a locked node in the way. This means every action with her must be defend. She does technically have the ability to move around for it, but it takes like 20 plus levels, so not worth it. This is going to massively slow down any grinding from this point forward. Not only that, I need more MP to even beat the next boss. This means means to get the other elements on Tidus and more MP, I need five more levels. And since I'm now limited to only magic, this takes freaking forever. After all, it takes more than 100 AP a level at this point. So, I do the dumbest thing possible. Or smart, I don't know. It's going to waste a sphere level, but I focus on getting an MP node before the other elements, just so I can cast more without having to go back to heal. After the grind, we move on. 
Once we beat the forced fish fight in the ruins, before activating the machine, I go back and heal my MP ready for the boss. There's a problem though, Tross has 2200 HP, and I do about 50 damage per spell cast. This means I only do about 400 damage before I'm out of MP, meaning I'm screwed. Kinda. It just means I need to grind for more MP and more magic stat. One AP at a time. And right now, I need more than 200 AP per level. Now, I try again with 8 magic stats and 72 MP. And for those wondering how long this took, I'm nearly at the freaking raw spells. Another 7 levels and I would have access to all raw spells and Riku is sitting on 12 levels saved up. So, we try Tross one more time, but even now it is still not enough. We do 60 odd damage a hit and can cast 18 spells, meaning we did about 1200 damage total. This means he still has 1000 HP roughly left. And of course, this means more grinding. At this point, I don't know what would be better though. More magic stat or the raw spells. So, I save my sphere levels up until I have enough for the raw spells, then I save my game and try Tross again. My thinking is if Fundara is not enough, I can reload my save and go over to Yuna's side of the grid for more MP and more magic stats. So let's see. Fundara does 3 times more damage than Funda and costs 2 times more MP. This means we got freaking close. This time he was seriously just a couple of casts away from being dead. But honestly, how are we having so much trouble on the first freaking boss? Anyway, back to grinding. And for those wondering, the Uniroot with more magic and using thunder it performed worse. Now, after a little more grinding for more MP, we can finally beat the first boss. It only took 25 hours to get this far. On the plus side though, my Titus is now pretty strong, so we should have no real issues until around Meehan, hopefully. Anyway, uh, so Kimari gets deep fried, we finish up the tutorials and end up on the beach. At this point, we can change the party around and go back to grind. We just want all characters to get access to the basic spells here. So I throw Tidus, Yuna and Walker together and I defend with everybody until they get a turn and then use Tidus to murder things, going back to the beach to use the save point as required. Next up is the Sin Finn. I swap Kimari out for Lulu since he has no magic currently, and then I get Lulu and Yuna to murder the Sin Finn and take out two scales to reduce the damage I take. The reason I stop attacking with Titus is to save his MP for the underwater Sin spawn. And considering the grind I did before this fight, it's actually very hit or miss. Walker can only cast two spells before he's useless, and in the end I get so close to dying and running out of MP on Titus, I can't help but sit back, scratch my head, and wonder how the rest of this is going to go, because even for me, I can't believe how restrictive this run is and how slow it is. But we do eventually down the boss. And it's on to Kilika, where people die, Yuna dances. Next step though, is actually preparing for Luca. We have quite an annoying time there coming up. We have a mob rush with Kimari, Lulu and Tidus. A boss with those three characters who can inflict silence as a counter to magic. And then another mob rush with just Tidus and Walker. This is going to be a huge problem in terms of MP management damage and avoiding the game ending statuses. I have a plan though. The two mob rushes can be done with just enough MP. The boss however will have 6000 health. I want to try and murder it with Lulu's overdrive and a cast from each character before silence hits me. 
This is a gamble, though. So, I'll make two saves here in case I need to come back. But we're getting ahead of ourselves right now. We're still in Gillica. We have Ochu and another Sin Spawn to fight. But again, grinding first for MP. Unit is also super easy to get the raw spells with as they're so close to her grid. The main goal here is to pick up raw spells on everybody and then move into Yuna's grid for healing. Isuna, life, and more magic or MP since she has more of those nodes closer to where she starts compared to Lulu. Once Yuna and Lulu have the raw spells, I move on to Ochu, who gets absolutely shredded by the women casting fire. I even get amazingly lucky and get the MP sphere drops. This means an extra 80 MP across the board. I was originally debating actually saving and reloading to try and get these, but for once, RNGesus has my back. I'll save these until I have a few more sphere levels later though, as I want all my characters closer together to grab them on all characters, or unless I urgently need the MP boost. Since born, Geno gets burnt alive as expected. I knew the grind I did would make this fight a joke. I'm still really iffy about Luca though. So I do the temple and then make a spare save here just in case I need to come back to grind later. We get jet shot for the memes. I have no intention to win the match with the goers simply because the strength sphere prize is pointless for me, but hey, style points, right? In Luca, the Machina goes down nicely, but I'm an idiot and forget I wanted Lulu's overdrive for the boss and I forgot to charge it in Killica. But hey, it's fine because I'm just not smart. It's amazing how many times I played this game and still forget silence wears off after three turns. And even if it didn't, I have Isuna for Tidus, so I could have just cleansed anyway. But a few Fundaras and it goes down. I sit AFK for 10 minutes while Blitzball finishes up, or at least plan to or until I changed my mind in the second half and got the win for lols. Then, murder the Sahagans. We are a little strong right now because of the grind I did earlier for the Machina, but thankfully we're not over grinded. We're at about mushroom rock levels of power right now. We skip Balgamine as that would require us to summon and is not mandatory to progress, so not allowed to do it. For Chocobo Eater, we spam Fire Magic its weakness with Yuna, Lulu and Tidus, and actually end up pushing it off the cliff super easily. He only actually hit me once and that was a blizzard counter, so I'm not going to complain about such an easy win since now we can advance on to Sinsborn Gui the nightmare boss from my Seymour only run. We start off by killing the head, followed by the arms. Once this is done, I decide to use Lulu's overdrive, which went horribly and did pretty much the same damage a normal cast would do. The only difference is the massively longer wait time. So I basically gave up two turns with Lulu for nothing. He spams Demi a few times and that's about it. I just spam fire and kill the arms when they respawn. Just before I kill the boss though, I make Yuna use Cure on herself since she's nearly dead and is also in the next fight. Second stage goes down effortlessly to nobody's surprise given that Seymour is there. Next up is the Templar Jose, and then onto the Moonflow for Extractor, which I'm actually worried about. Titus and Walker do so little damage with magic, it's unreal. So we'll have to see how it goes. Titus does have Cure for Healing, but I'm still iffy on if I can manage it currently. Just a shame gear will do pretty much nothing for me for ages, so I can only rely on levels. It's ultimately not needed though with the levels gained from the way to the moon flow and me taking Walker along Yuna's path. His magic stat becomes semi-decent and with haste from Tidus, we didn't really have much to worry about in that fight at all. I didn't even need to heal. That won't be the case for Spear Morph though. He has high magic defense and keeps swapping his elements around, so I'm likely going to heal him a few times. Anyway, Jailbait strips, Goddess Alarm, Ghost Hunting, Storm Chasing, and then we end up at Mokalonia for the actual Spear Morph fight. I start with Haste on Yuna and then swap Lulu in. It's a 
bit of a dance with his elemental shift, and I do heal the boss more than I care to admit, but after Thunder Planes and Mokalonia's jump in EXP, and the Expert Grid having quicker paths, I do have the Gar Spells on the women now for decent damage. When I actually get the right element landing, that is. I also throw a bio out for some poison damage before trying Demi to see if that works, as I just couldn't remember. Turns out it does, and it eventually goes down just before I end up dying. Nightmare time though, because it's Crawler and Negator. And Negator blocks all magic from being used, including Lulu's Overdrive. So with all magic blocked, Lulu's Overdrive blocked, and still keeping within the rules, what can we do? Simple. Blue magic. Obviously, I can't learn Kimori's Overdrive because of the rule set, but he starts with Jump and a tutorial forces him to learn Seed Cannon. For this, we need to essentially one-shot Negator with Seed Cannon. My first attempt only deals about 700 damage though, so we need more stats on Kimari to pull it off. And it works! Kinda. Seed Cannon crits doing over 4,000 damage to one shot Negator, and then I will crawl it down. But before I can fully kill him, he spawns another Negator. And I realize there's no way Kimari will survive long enough to get an Overdrive. So I reload my save and change Kimari over to Ally Overdrive instead and go back in. Pretty much an identical fight later, and Kimari gets his overdrive a second time, allowing me to murder Negator and finish Crawler off. Progress! Or at least I'd hoped. We're on to Seymour and Anima, now followed by the Yeti. They get buffs to reduce magic damage, and Seymour himself has high magic defense. So let's see how this goes. We start off with hasting Yuna and swapping Kimari out for Lulu. Yuna and Lulu murder the Guado with Seymour, and then Lulu gets hasted as well. I start making Lulu blast away at Seymour while I get Yuna to set up some defenses. Seymour hits kinda hard after all, and after Anima he has the multi hit so better to protect ourselves now during the weakest part of the fight. Once that's done, we blast him away and move on to Anima. Anima though is thankfully quite easy thanks to Demi working doing solid damage. Titus does get hit with pain and killed off, but Unicast live to bring him back before we nuke Anima away. Seymour Phase 3 is easily dealt with thanks to him losing Shell, and now we move on to the Yeti after the most annoying cloister. Now, Yeti is dangerous. He has Berserk and Shell for me to worry about. He straight up one shots any character he lands a hit on. So I kill the two Guado off who buff Yeti and then haste Yuna and Lulu. I try a Demi which does work, but because of Shell it does a tiny bit more than a normal Gar spell. And since the lower Yeti's health becomes, the lower Demi will be, I simply switch over to casting Fire again. Titus does end up dying, but a life from Yuna brings him back. And then we continue the fight. Yeti continues to miss the girls thanks to Lulu's path having so much more evasion than the others, and he does eventually go down. But with Yeti beat, we now have a boatload of problems coming up. Firstly, I lose access to Yuna now for Beaconel and the airship, which means I lose my strongest character and my best healer. This means I need to get somebody down Yuna's path ASAP so I can actually heal and revive in fights. And while Beaconel is an excellent grinding spot, it's also a terrible spot for magic. And the airship fights coming up are even worse due to all the chances to get silenced. We do manage to barbecue the zoo with Lulu and slowly make our way to the other characters. 
At this point, since Walker already has some white magic, I turn him into my white mage. I get haste to go with Tidus and then bring him back down to travel through Yuna and Lulu's grid. Lulu, I finish off her grid. I do not pick up double cast because even though it's related to magic, it is still a skill itself and therefore banned in our rules. Once I've done that, I bring her back down to Yuna's grid, go through that a little and into Riku's side, slowly making my way to Flare. Hopefully, I'll have that before I get to see more at Gagazette. As for the others, yeah, I've kind of given up on them now. Kimari should be strong enough to do the run so far to Gagazette, and if not, I can level him later. And luckily, this grind doesn't take too long thanks to death with Lulu at first. And as characters get stronger, fire magic starts doing some good work. However, Lulu's base magic being high starts to shine now as she's now a freaking tank. Just a shame, once we hit calm lands, magic defense for things begins to skyrocket and magic slowly becomes useless in a normal playthrough. In home, we do all the password chests for unique spheres and move on, making sure to grab the level 4 key sphere. Next up is Every. A uh, very interesting fight in how we do things. First, I cast Reflect on the boss. No, I did not forget this is a magic only run. Hear me out, okay? So I reflect the boss and put Hastiger up. Then I cast Protect on everybody and set up Reflect on Lulu. This way I can bounce spells off of Lulu and hit the boss, ignoring his Reflect. The reason we wanted Reflect up, however, is because of his little trick with casting Haste once he loses some HP. We do not want this guy getting haste considering he can inflict such nasty status effects on me and since he has reflect on when he does cast it then it just gets bounced back to me completely wasting his turn allowing me to nuke him down without too much worry and its drop is the amazing black magic spheres but we're going to save them for Flare later on, and maybe even Ultimate. Not quite decided on which one yet. I've not decided for now, but it's time to suffer in Baval's Cloister. Not like we care about Bahamut now. In Via Perifico, we rush to Lulu to carry me through here, and then pick up the Juicy Spheres. Mobs are dangerous before I get to her though, so I just escape. In Isaru's fight, this is the only time we're allowed to summon now. Not only does Aeon MP not refill between fights, but Yuna is not super leveled, so the Aeons are not amazing either. And I'm limited to low level magic for the most part. Bahamut does well taking out Efreet and Veilfer, but then I get worried because I can't use Bahamut against Isaru's version. So I summon Shiva, which thankfully, even with simple raw magic, actually still does a whopping 5k per cast, letting me take him down much easier than I was actually expecting. Next up, Every Atlanta, who I of course cheese with life magic. I make a spare save on the high bridge because I'm not going to grind here. However, it is the best place to grind before we get the airship. So, with the spare save, if there's any problems at Gagazet or Xanakand, I can just reload here and do a grind. Now, on to Seymour. Hastiger goes out, Titus then gets petrified, and I swap Kimari out for Lulu. And then, well, he dies. Like, I'm I'm not even over-leveled or anything. I mean, okay, Lulu is a little. But even Yuna is doing 7,000 damage, and she's not even finished off Lulu's grid. I forgot just how dumb expert grid is for stat placements. But... We're onto the calm lands now, where there's a difficulty spike anyway, so my advantage won't really last. Speaking of calm lands, <clears throat> I did zero second catch a chocobo for absolutely no reason. 
I know a ton of people struggle with it, so I figured I'd include it for style points. And to cause mass outrage in the comment section, with people commenting the minigame is impossible and they'll never do it. That's right, I just called you all out. By all means though, go for it, it helps the algorithm for this video, and for anybody wondering, it took three attempts, which I'm happy with, considering I've not done it in quite a while now. I think the last time was when I did the Transcendence mod, and attempt two was on a complete BS layout for balloons. Anyway, Hopefully I've dragged this little bragging experience out enough for Daft to edit the free runs and fast forward through them. Now, before you dislike the video because I'm stalling for time for her, let's move on. Now it's time for Defender X. I have no provoke this time though, meaning it is fully possible for him to kill me. And of course, he hits like a freaking truck, which is bad because my characters have all gone down the mage path. So they're pretty much just pure glass cannons. Low defense, high damage. This is the worst enemy for me. With haste to go up and all the extra agility from Yuna and Lulu's grid though, we outspeed him quite a lot. He does do tons of damage, but I nearly kill him off before his actual second turn comes up. This is where he uses Sloger on me. Now, if he opened with this, he might have been able to do some harm. But by this point, he was just two hits away from death. But it's at this point, I decide Hastiger and my agility is just too strong. So I'm going to ban using Hastiger from this point forward, unless a fight becomes impossible without it. Yes, I'm doing a fresh ban midway through a run to make it harder. Now for the Ronso fight. I target Biran first to murder due to him having lower health and access to White Wind. And I know I said to ban haste, not for this fight, since Kimari hasn't been leveled too much. Things start off okay and Biran goes down after some fires, but that's when things go sideways and fast. Yenke berserks himself and now does over one thousand damage per turn. This means I spend all my time healing. I eventually get to a point I can do a little damage, but my MP is running dangerously low. So I decide to gamble. I have two turns and an overdrive for Kimari. So I use Seed Cannon, which does way less than I expected, and because of that, I couldn't kill him on my second turn, resulting in me dying. So I use a Friendship Sphere from before to move him closer to the Gauss Balls, and also Protect and Shell. I pick up both of them and make my way through the rest of the nodes before stopping at the gas spells. This should give me enough protection and damage now to get through the Ronsos, since I didn't get too many stat upgrades, but I forget it's based on Kimari's sphere level as well, so their stats basically freaking double. This time I take Yenke out first, which I'm also not sure if it was a good idea or not, because he casts Mighty God. So now Biren has Shell, and I only do 1000 damage even with Fireager. Not to mention, Biren hastes himself, so I lose my speed advantage. Thankfully though, he's weak, and I have Shell and Protect up, so I'm able to kill him just before I run out of MP. Now, a rematch with Seymour, where I got absolutely destroyed. Wasn't even close to a win. We're, like, without taste good, nah. The zombie and full life combo, I try to get around using Reflect, but his damage output is insane. Titus spent most turns just casting life and healing where he can. Seymour likes to use Dispel, so protective buffs wouldn't help me that much. I Dispel Seymour's Reflect and Protect, but he keeps casting it, and then I finally died to Total Annihilation. I've not struggled with Seymour this much in a very 
long time, which is great. It means it's a challenge. I do, however, decide to pick up Protect, Shell, and Dispel on everybody, though. Lulu also reaches Flare, and so I use Black Magic Spheres to then get Titus and Yuna to learn it as well. Now, for attempt number two. I start by putting Protect up with everybody, then Yuna gets a zombie. So I shall her and then reflect her to protect against full life. Then I shall Lulu. At this point, I spam Flare and I inflict poison by using Bio with Lulu. It's at this point Seymour's AI decides to put his dunce cap on as the skill set he used was a joke compared to attempt one. He used Lance a few times, tried to spam for life and then put up his own buffs. Another total of Annihilation did go off which killed Tidus, but the protection on Lulu and Yuna let them survive it. And we could flare Seymour in the face for another win. Sanctuary Keeper has a lot of bad gimmicks though, so I decide to go full glass cannon here and ignore buffs of any kind and just go for pure damage. His magic defense is insanely high as well, so Flare is only hitting for about 6,000 damage. He also opens up silencing two of my characters. I leave Titus B, but I get Yuna to cleanse Lulu and start flaring. It goes okay until Yuna takes Mana Beam to the face, killing her. Lulu does not have life, and Titus is still silenced at this point, so she's dead for good. Then Keeper throws up regen on himself, giving him even more health back. Titus' silence wears off though, and a couple more flares takes him out. Now we're on to an even worse boss and an annoying Cloister of Trials. I seriously wish there was a skip option for Cloisters or some kind of mod to skip them. Next boss is Spectral Keeper. And attempt one is over instantly because I forget about his counters. So let's skip that one and try attempt number two. And yes, I know I can move panels to avoid it. Special commands are not magic, not allowed. I start off with Protect, and I don't know why, because his counter ignores it. Me being dumb, I set up Shell, thinking maybe that will lower the damage. No dice. Titus then spends the time healing Yuna, and Yuna plus Lulu spam Flare. It's slow, and Titus does die, but Spectral also can't hit water, even falling out of a boat right now. So, we manage to kill him off. Now it's nightmare time though, Unalaska, and I have no holy to abuse. Honestly, I think I'm going to get slaughtered here, but let's see. And straight off the bat, we have a huge problem. She counters with silence. Thankfully, she chooses not to do this with Yuna, allowing me to be sooner. Stage 1 goes fine, and then stage 2 I give up with Flare because even though it's stronger, the delay is huge. I also throw Reflect on Yuna to stop her being regened, but then it's bounced to the boss. Oopsie. A few more fire riggers. Lulu is nearly dead, but we move on to stage Three. My three zombie characters survive the Megadeth, but Lulu has just 92 HP, so she dies instantly after, and now Unalaska is countering again. And I can't heal Yuna, my big nuker. But eventually, Mind Blast comes out as well, taking my HP even lower. Thankfully, no confuse though. And then, Shikurigas tired us to kill him off. I do revive him, but not long after, she megadeths, taking Lulu and Tidus out. Bringing them back, and Tidus is almost out of MP, all three characters are zombied, so I can't heal them. But, Unalaska is almost dead. And of course, she uses Mind Blast, which confuses Tidus and Yuna, meaning only Lulu can attack. Thankfully, Unalaska only has 6,600 HP, so I use a flare to finish the fight off. 
Honestly, I got lucky here. If the first mind blast had confused me, I would have died, no questions asked. I also grabbed the Suncrest just because. It's not like I'm even going to bother with Celestials, as I'm almost positive they don't even affect magic. Pretty sure all their hidden bonuses are physical only, but I might get Lulus. I can't get Yunus though, as that requires summoning and monster capture, so that's a no-go since monsters cannot be captured with magic. And now... As a great man named Sid once said, it's the final showdown with Sin. The arms are really simple. I just blast them with fire again. He does slap me a few times and Tidus does die, but it's only Tidus. Since born, Geno is weak to fire, so he takes full damage, but he counters with Wartigo and kills Yuna. So I use Life of Tidus and then finish it off. Now, it's time for the call, but all my characters are nearly dead. He uses Gravager dropping me to just a few hundred health. He ends up killing Tidus and I take a gamble on if I can kill it or not. I use Flare with Lulu who gets countered and killed and then he has just under 7,000 HP left. At this point, if I use Flare and don't kill it, he gets two turns where Yuna will absolutely die. But. The gamble works, and her flair murders it. Now it's time for the big mouth. At this point, I go through my gear, as I've not checked that in ages, only to find out Titus had a weapon, the Arc Sword, with half MP cost. I wondered when I actually got that. It was probably Seymour at Gagazet, as I think he can drop half MP weapons. Anywho, Sin's head is actually rather boring. He does petrify Lulu and Yuna early on, but I assume them with Tidus, and then it's just a case of spamming fire again. He did, however, get close to using his overdrive, which would have caused me to game over, but he didn't, so let's move on. We're coming up to the end now, just two fights left to go really, and the first one is Seymour, who I'm not looking forward to. I'm not sure if I'll have the survivability for this fight, and he has Ultima as well, so I guess we'll have to see. I start off by rotating a wheel, but Seymour's hitting me for 2000 damage a hit, and he gets 4 casts. So. I throw up Null Spells each turn with Tidus and Yuna, then with extra turns with them I try to get Shell up as well. And with Lulu, I then start working on Seymour until I change her to spinning the wheels so he can only use the raw spells. Then I get Lulu and Yuna to spam Thundergo while Tidus heals and uses Null Spells. It's a dangerous approach for sure though as I'm giving up defense for damage mostly. He does dispel me right before ultimate, so I reset Shell up to see if I can survive it, and of course I can't. This is because I forget Seymour's version of Ultima is unique. It actually doesn't deal magical damage. It deals a third type of damage known as special damage, so Shell isn't going to work. New plan though. I'm going to keep all four wheels on fire mode and use Null Blaze with Tidus. This means one character will take damage every turn, but also means he'll be weak to ice magic, letting me do max damage. I basically need to either grind more HP or kill him before Ultima. So, Let's try again, and I royally mess up. Blizzard doesn't do full damage because of his magic defense, and I cast Null Frost instead of Null Blaze. Yuna dies, and I know for a fact I can't win whether I revive her or use Null Blaze, so it's time to either grind a little for more health and damage, as ultimate is going to be a hard wall here, or use Hastiger. I know I banned it earlier in the run because it made things too easy, but that was earlier in the game. Let's see if it works now though to avoid having to grind since that would make us even stronger. So, attempt number three. Tidus uses Hastiger, Lulu Blizzger, and Yuna Null Blaze. Yuna takes the extra hit, which is annoying, then I set up Shell and heal Yuna. Now, I can finally fully go Glass Cannon with Yuna and Lulu, while Tidus uses Null Blaze and heals. I get him all the way down to just a few thousand health before he ultimates again but lulu survived letting me finish seymour off with two more blizzard casts albeit barely her and titus nearly died as well now i know for a fact i simply cannot beat broska's final aeon 
at my current stats from when I did the item only challenge run a few years back. My health just is not enough for his party wide attacks or his limit break, so I do get some levels before finally starting the fight. I also pick up Ultima and use Black Magic Spheres to teach it to Lulu and Yuna. For those wondering, this is what my sphere grids look like now. So it's on to Braska's final Aeon. I start with Tidus using Ultima to stop the Pagadas, and then use Fyruga with Yuna. Braska's final Aeon deals 2000 damage a hit to me, so the grind I did was absolutely needed. He doesn't like Yuna much though, and hits her again. I'm finally able to swap Oren out for Lulu and heal Yuna. The Pagodas do start to move again, so I ultimate with Tidus again with his half MP cost weapon. MP management is going to be very important right now. After all, for Broska's final Aeon's two forms, killing the Aeons, and then you Yevon, that's a lot of spell casts and a lot of healing. And I don't have Osmos, so we need to be very careful with our usage. So, no spamming Ultima, Flare, or Holy, sadly. On to stage two object though. He cleaves and only hits Tidus, thankfully. Then the Pagoda starts up again and he petrifies Lulu. He's getting close to an overdrive though, which is scary. So I try to set up defenses before remembering regen is terrible in this game. But then Yuna gets hit by Osmos. So now she is completely useless to me and Tidus and Lulu are nearly dead. Tidus dies, so I bring him back with full life. I have to use Ultima with Lulu to kill the Bagodas off again, though. The delay from Braska's final Aeon's attacks is absolutely murdering me here, though. He is routinely getting two turns. Tidus dies again, so it's another full life, but Lulu is nearly out of MP now. Yuna gets stoned, and I'm not going to waste a turn using a sooner on her, but this also means no more sense. So, I don't know how much HP the boss has now. A couple more hits, and Jekt gets another overdrive for ultimate Jekt shot, which kills off Lulu. Tidus brings her back, but both Bagardas are spinning again, but an ultimate from Tidus wins the fight. Now, it's time for the Aeons, though, and my MP is non-existent at this point. Sure, I can't die anymore thanks to auto life, but if I run out of MP, then it's game over anyway and I have to restart. Lulu kills Veilfurt with a Fyriga, and then my freaking game crashes, so screw me, I guess. Thank God for auto saves on the PC version, though, so thankfully, I don't have to do Broska's final Aeon again. Anyway, once again, Veilfurt dies to Fyriga, Ifrit dies to Blizzard, and my game freaks out again with the audio, with Tidus just shouting Yuna. Oh, and Ifrit somehow came back to life. Like, seriously, listen to this though. Anyway, I mute the game and murder Ifrit for a second time. At this point though, Lulu is basically out of MP. I still have three Aeons to kill and you Yevon yet. Lulu murders Ixion and now she can cast a normal tier 1 spell until she is completely out of MP. So I get her to cast fire on Shiva, which does not kill her, and then Tidus finishes it off with a fire again. We murder Bahamut, sorry Daf, by having Tidus use Holy, except he still survived and gets revenge with Impulse, murdering my whole party. Thankfully, it's impossible to lose here, so his revenge sucked. A second Holy finishes him off. And now, I have just 243 MP to kill you, Yevon, and I don't have Reflect on Tidus, meaning every time I hit him, he just heals for full health, aka impossible for me to kill. So I need to go back to the drawing board here. I could try again and again to make sure I have more MP, but these cutscenes are freaking long, so I do things the lazy way. I reload the autosave, and instead of having Lulu kill the Aeons, I get Tidus to do it because Lulu has Reflect. Things went well. Lulu had a nice amount of MP left until I got to you, Yevon, when the game crashed again. I guess all the mods I've installed over the years have finally taken their toll, but after a complete uninstall of the game and a reinstall, let us try yet 
again. I also say screw the no haste rule for this attempt because I'm tired of doing the same fight over and over again now. So I put haste on Tidus just to kill the things faster. Also, sorry for making you watch Bahamut die like six times, Daff. But we crashed again right as you Yevans fight started. This is legitimately getting annoying now because I know I can freaking win the fight. I just need 28 MP on Lulu to reflect Yu Yevon and then reflect one of my characters and bounce Gar spells off my own reflect. I know full well it is possible, but the freaking game won't let me do it. So I'm trying one more thing. I will uninstall the game, reinstall it again, and then give up on the auto save and load the save from before Broska's final Aeon. Things might even go better for me as long as I can make sure the Pagodas don't get a turn in to use Osmos on me. But things went much smoother this time. I have a nice supply of MP on all characters. And even though some halves are a little low, it hardly matters anymore. And hey, this time it works. I bio you Yevon to poison it, set up reflect on it, and then on Lulu, and then spam a few more attacks while he slowly dies while healing me so can you beat final fantasy 10 using only magic yes it's much harder than i thought though and posed quite a few interesting challenges for sure some of which i never expected but now i have a question for you all well two questions actually uh, first are you going to attempt this yourself and second what do you think the big video next week is going to be? Also, if you're still here right now, make sure you drop a like and a comment as it helps the channel tremendously. And if you've enjoyed this video, then subscribe so you don't miss more likeies. Also, down in the description is a playlist absolutely full of videos just like this one. So go check them out. And of course, join our Discord server. It's linked on my link tree along with all my other socials. You should absolutely check out. And if you super duper want to help out the channel, consider getting some awesome merch. And of course, let's not forget, go drop a follow to our lovely Dafshu, resident editor, troll, and lovable gremlin. Until next week, though, everybody, I will see you all later.